Right, another great day uh, down here on Stjinterfell. Right, so I can get the uh, the mana to spread all the way over here, but it has to go here. So that that's fine, right? I think that's okay. What I'll do is I will create, I'll put down a wooden a wooden block here, and we'll just have to put our runic altar right on there. So I'll throw the mana pearl, the pearl in here to, to make it a mana pearl. No sweat. And there we go, we've got our mana pearl. And now we've got the living rock that we need, or do we? No, we don't actually, so I need to dig some of this up. There we go. But again, like while I'm out here, why not just replace this stuff? So down goes the rock. And down goes the wood. Yeah, no sweat. Right, now let's turn this runic altar into a reality. So we put the mana pearl in the middle. We wrap those around. There we go, runic altar. Oh yeah, we're getting there guys, we're getting there. Right, so this is pretty basic stuff, but it's still pretty exciting to me. Now a runic altar has to charge, I think. And when we press this, no, it doesn't need to charge actually, but this should be charging. What does the book say about runic altars? To utilize the runic altar via right-clicking or simply tossing the components to the rune you want to create. It should be apparent when the altar has received enough mana. When that happens, just drop a piece of living rock on top of it and use the wand on it again to collect your rune. All right, cool. 16 runes exist. There are basic ones and there are complex ones. Right, I see now. This is a pretty healthy mana setup that we got here. So it should be charging up this altar pretty well. But let's start by trying to create our first rune. Before we can create a rune though, we need to work out which way we're going in. What flowers do we want to create with Botania? Well, let's take a look. Now we want to be thinking about our end game, which is flight. And that's not functional flora, that's not generating flora. It's more baubles and accessories. So there's pendants, girdles, spectre, a tiny planet. It's a bauble with gravitational properties. While equipped, the planet will pull any nearby mana bursts towards the wearer. Wow. Cool. Okay. What about these rings then? Because I saw these before. What's what, what kind of rings can we get? What does a band of mana do? Oh, right. So what this what this ring lets you do is basically mana's stuck in pools like this over here. It's in a fixed place and there's nothing you can do with it. That mana's not going anywhere unless you use this mana pool right here you're not going to get any of that mana out. Well, no, that's not the case. What you can do is you can get these special rings that let you pull mana out of a mana pool and then put it wherever you want. So you can transfer from one mana pool to the other. And what that lets us do is it means we can just have one mana pool over here and we use like a mana tablet to transfer it over. So let's make a mana tablet first things first. Oh, wow, <laughs> hang on a sec. We can make some really cool stuff with Batania, we can make a unicorn horn. Wow. Equipable in the amulet slot, no way. We can also make devil horns, hyper plus. Did I see googly eyes here? Equipable in the amulet slot. Right, so that's some of the baubles we can make and a mana ring or a mana tablet is high up on that list of things to make. But what about mystical items? Now where are, where are these? Where are these? Now a living wood bow. A bow? It's last for longer than a normal bow, and it'll repair itself using mana, but is it any good? Does it shoot aeroplanes? No, it doesn't, and that's not how you spell aeroplanes. Right, okay, mana steel equipment, it's like others, but it's not as good as like, wait, 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 such as a mana tablet. If there's mana available in the inventory, it'll be used that instead. Oh, right, so mana tablets and rings are a way for you to carry around mana as well, because certain things, certain items in Britannia, use mana to kind of, to power them. Probably like the wings, actually, that's probably true. Well, okay, how do you make the rings, though? There's also terra blade, terra steel armor. Terra steel itself is just, I think, like iron. But um, but mixed around with a few things and then imbued with mana. What is a horn of the wild? What's an assembly halo? Ah, oh, no way! Wow, there's some really cool stuff in Britannia. So an assembly halo lets you carry around a crafting bench. How do you make one of those? A mana pearl, three mana steel, and a crafting table. Well, we can make the mana pearl easy enough. How do you make mana steel? Shift click to see recipe. You just put regular iron. Wow, that's it? No way! Okay, cool. So we can make one of those super quick and we'll do that. 
we can also make... What's a mana blaster? It's like a portable mana spreader, shaped like a pistol. It's not exactly a firearm. It can shoot a mana burst when one is looking at this. Oh, right, so you can you can carry a short um, a short amount, a small amount of, of mana in your hand in a gun and then shoot it into pools. Oh, and there's some rods. What do these rods do? Circle of flame that burns anything inside. Wow, for a decent cost of mana. So again, you really do need one of these mana rings if you're doing anything in Britannia. Natural apparatus. All right, this is like um, machinery. Mana pylons, open crate. Ender artifacts, extracting ender air. Force relay, a hand of ender, allows the user to access the interdimensional ender field. In other words, their ender chest inventory. Oh, right, so it's like a portable ender chest. Soul scribe. By using a dagger with some of the energy, you can create a soul scribe that tears through endermen as if they were butter. All oh, right, so it's like a magical dagger that's just really good at killing endermen. So what about a miscellaneous? The wings in miscellaneous? No, a tiny potato. How do you make a tiny potato? Oh, you put like a potato in the mana pool. All right, cool. So alpha mancy. Hang on a sec. There's something at play here now then, because here it says in Britannia, we can make these flugels. So what happens when we press R on the wings? Because that's what we want to do, right? We want to create some wings that will get us around. So how do we make these? Elementium, Gaia spirits, Ender air bottle, and feathers. Right, well, first things first, let's just slowly work our way towards getting Elementium. Elementium is the first goal. So you can get it from either combining a block of Elementium, you can craft it into nine. You can turn Elementium nuggets into Elementium ingots, or you can turn Elementium nuggets into Elemental Elementium ingots. Okay, that's simple enough, but where do you get Elementium nuggets? So let's wiki this. Oh no, I see, right. Suddenly it's all been made very plain to me. To make Elementium, you need a portal to Alfheim. So before we do anything, we have to get a portal to Alfheim. So we're gonna start off by making a band of mana. Simple enough, mana steel ingots and a tablet. How do you make a tablet? Living rock around a mana pearl. Right, let's do it. In goes the mana pearl. Around go the living rock, and BAM! We got ourselves a mana tablet! Okay, pretty cool. And now to make the mana ring, which is the next step. Or was it a band of- no, there it is, the band of mana. We need four mana steel ingots. So to get that, we need some iron. And we turn the iron into mana steel. Now, mana steel is like a really, really common requirement for Britannia. So I'm just gonna get a whole bunch of iron blocks out of the warehouse and just throw them in. Bam! 17 blocks of iron, I'll take them all, I'll take them all! See you later Trot and see you later Sam. Sam Strip, no that's Benji, sorry. We haven't actually got Strippin' on the- oh that's a good point actually. We could, uh, we could definitely get Sam Strippin' on our, um, in our kingdom. Right, bombs away, let's throw in some blocks of iron! Oh no, no, wait, now hang on a sec. We should be careful because we just wasted a little bit of mana from that pool. But what we need to do is use the mana from, um... Oh, it's just, what we'll do is, we're gonna, gonna put this spreader back facing this way. And then we're gonna use the mana from this pool so that we can fill it back up. Otherwise, we're kind of wasting it. So let's just make a whole load of these. Oh, whoops. Now the tick arrow, the tick on the arrow there means we do have enough mana in there to make what we're trying to make. But turning a whole block instead of like an ingot takes a lot more mana than anything else. I mean, if I just turn like 10 of these, let's see how much mana there is left. Yeah, well, it's, it's taken a sizable chunk out. Let's just turn another one. There we go, 13 blocks of mana steel. We could make ourselves with this like a full set of mana steel armor. That's a good idea, actually. But we don't need it just yet. So how many ingots do we get from this? Oh yeah, almost two stacks. So now we combine the mana tablet with four of these, and we have a mana ring, a band of mana. So what about a band of aura? What does a band of aura do? Let's take a look at what these bands do, because they might have different properties that we want instead of just a plain old band of mana. So a band of aura, deviation from the typical band of mana, which instead of storing mana, 
It slowly, while the crypt creates it and stores it into mana containing items. Oh, no way! So you can actually just create mana from thin air. No way, that sounds really cool. Although mana is something that we do not have a shortfall of. We've got loads of mana generating flowers, but now I'm reading this, I'm starting to think that we're gonna need a lot more mana than we're generating at the moment, like a ton more. So let's take a look. Also, we need a rune of mana, although it might be quite cool to show you guys how you actually create these runes. So what other rings can we get? A monocle. A ring of core data allows the wearer to swim like a fish. Wow, so you can accelerate to decent speed while underwater. Good sight underwater, and if mana is present, you don't even need to breathe. That's crazy. So if there's like an underwater lord, like some evil kind of mermaid naga, we can go and use that ring to go and get them. A ring of correction. Switching tool is a pain. While this ring is worn, the tool in hand will always be the right one for the block. This only works for tools that can use mana. All oh, right, so it works like mana steel stuff. What's a ring of magnetization? I guess it sucks items in. A correction, that's the pick one. Oh, it's raining again. Ring of the mantle allows one to mine faster while they're uh, equipped and mana is present. No way, some of these are really cool rings, but I think what we want is the one that we have over here, a mana ring. So let's just make it and put it on. Right, okay, so we've got our band of mana. How do you put it on? Well, you have to click on this bauble slot. When you go and check your inventory, there's like a circle that says baubles. You click on that, and bam, suddenly you get a whole new set of equipment. Now, I think we can actually have two rings on. Oh, inner arts, sweet, we're getting a cheeves. Like it's 1990 cheeve. Inner arts, craft any variety of bauble and wear it. Nice. So we got ourselves one ring, but we could craft another ring as well. So we've got a band of mana, but how do we actually put mana into it? Right, okay, so let's try throwing our ring into a mana pool to see if we can suck some of the mana out of it and put it into different things. Oh, no, nope, didn't quite work. No, why is this not working? Do we right click with it? Oh wait, I right clicked, what happened? Oh, we, we, we put it on. So how do we use it while it's on? Right, so I think what we do is we toss the, the mana ring onto the mana pool, and now it's on top of it bubbling. Oh, whoops, we got a bit too close. And now if we use our wand of the forest, and we shift right click, sparing mana to items. So now it should be sucking mana out. Oh yeah, and at an, 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 an expended rate, you can see it going down real quick, and that means it's putting mana into the ring. Oh, that's great news. It's emptying so quick, but it's okay because we're getting so much mana. All we have to do is leave this on overnight, and we've got like another full pool of mana. That's it, all right, that's all of the mana sucked out into the ring. So now when we grab up the ring, look, it's got no durability bar, which means it's full. Oh, that is sweet. We've got a full band of mana now. So what is the next step? Now to make a portal to Alfheim, let's take a look. So to make the Elven Gateway Core, we need Terra Steel Nuggets and Living Wood. And that's gonna be our first thing, the Elven Gateway Core. To make Terra Steel Nuggets. How do we make a Terra Steel Nugget? Let's find out. We can just look here. Now Terra Steel is this green stuff. It's like an ingot, a green ingot. It should be around, we should be able to see it somewhere. There it is, Terra Steel ingot. You make it making nuggets. But the true way to make Terra Steel should be here, basics and mechanics. Terra Steel, here we go. It's a complex magical alloy infused with a great amount of mana. Conjuring it proves not to be a small task. For starters, to create it, one would require a terrestrial agglomeration plate set on top of a checkerboard pattern of lapis lazuli blocks and living rock. Mana would need to be provided to this blocks, to this block, right? Sparks would be the most effective way. Really? Man, I feel it over, I feel like I'm in over my head. So what's a spark? Mana manipulation, here we go, sparks. Sparks are interesting entities created 
from a combination of raw energy and mana. They have the ability to be placed on top of a few specific mana containing or accepting blocks, mainly mana pools. Some blocks have the ability to harness mana from sparks, but the uses for them seem limited to a few blocks right now. Placing a spark on top of a mana pool and another on top of a block that can accept it will allow for the latter to remotely access the reservoirs of the mana pool when needed, given it's not too far away. So sparks are like teleportation for mana. Much in the way that you generate power, like electricity is moved around with wires, mana is moved around with sparks. So we don't need to use these mana spreaders anymore. Instead, we can just use like, um, like sparks to access batteries. So okay, let's do that. We can set up our agglomeration plate over here. All we're gonna need, and in fact, what we can do is now that we've got sparks working, we can move our runic altar as well to somewhere more reliable. Actually, honestly, now that we've got like our ring, I can transfer mana directly to the to the runic altar and put it somewhere a bit more sensible. But let's go and try and make our agglomeration plate. Right, so we need lapis lazuli and lots of it. So two stacks should be fine to make all the blocks we need. We can definitely get the living rock, no sweat. What else do we need for an agglom agglomeration plate? Right, so to make the agglomeration plate, we're gonna need three lapis lazuli blocks, one block of mana steel, and these runes, these specific runes, a rune of fire, a rune of air, a rune of mana, and a rune of earth and a rune of water. Okay, that's simple enough to make. We know how to make runes, We've got the mana steel and we can make the lapis lapis blocks right here. In fact, I'll do it right now. We're just gonna go like this and bam, seven blocks. Now out of those runes, what is the easiest one to make do you think? Let's try making shift click to see a recipe. Right, so let's try and make this rune of water. We need mana steel ingots, we need a fishing rod, sugar canes and bone meal. None of that should be too hard to do. Man, it comes in useful having this sugarcane farm, let me tell you. But we won't need all of these, so let's just grab what we need. And now we need to get some bone meal, so let's raid the warehouse. There we go. Some bone meal. Also, we're gonna need a fishing rod. So if we go L, E, F, A, B, C, D, F for fishing rod. There isn't a fishing rod in here, so we're gonna have to use some string. S for string. And sticks, S for sticks. Oh, awkward. Looks like there's no string in here, but don't worry, we can make our own with some cotton buds. Oh, no, there we go. There's some string in my uh, in my golden bag of holdings. Sweet. Well, that's all we need to go and make our first rune. Right, so we'll turn... There must be a better way of doing this. There must be a way for us to spread the mana over to, uh, to a mana pool over here and then use another spreader to get some, um, or you know what? Let's just move the runic altar over this way. I wanna see if we can put the runic altar behind the mana pool and have it just use that mana instead. Is there a way, do you think? I don't know. Let's see if it works when we put a runic altar at the back here. There we go, now this should, in theory, suck from the mana pool next to it, but I don't know if it does. I have to wait and see. So we need three mana steel ingots, a fishing rod. I'm not sure I've got enough sticks for this, but well, let's let's face it, there's three more. So a fishing rod. Whoops, not quite a fishing rod. Blam! The bone meal, the sugar canes, and the mana steel, and this should get us the rune that we need. Now, how do you do this? Well, you chuck it on. The same way you chuck in items into the mana pools, you chuck in this stuff, your ingredients, onto the runic altar, and, oh, didn't quite make it with that one. There we go, there's three mana steel ingots, a fishing rod, bone meal, and now the moment of truth. Let's see if this works. Okay, cool. Right, so everything's floating around, but it doesn't have the mana to make what we want it to make, so why is that? Let's take a look. Get the wand of the forest out, Oh! Okay, so it is working. We are getting mana from this back pool. Sweet! So I've pressed right click now and, and you can see the rune of water is showing up on the front dash. So, okay, what do we do now then? Let's consult the Lexca Botania. To utilize the, the altar, place, uh, place the components on top of it. 
and right click it with a wand of the forest. It should be apparent when the when the altar has received enough mana. When that happens, just drop a piece of living rock on top of it and use the wand on it again to collect your rune. Right, okay. So we just put a piece of living rock like that. Okay, and now the moment of truth. Oh no. Oh no! Work, damn you, work! I don't think this thing is getting the mana that it needs. So what we're going to do is we're going to break the runic altar, pick up all the stuff that it drops, and we're going to try putting it right over here to see if we just get the mana by shooting into it with the uh, with the mana spreader. Now how do we see if it's... Oh look, you can see! Now now the, uh, the little circle is filling up. When we hover over, it shows you how much mana it's getting towards being able to make this rune. Oh, it's taking a little time, but we're getting there, guys. Our first rune. I feel like we've unlocked some real secrets of Botania now, and next episode we can definitely get on and create the uh, the agglomeration plate, and we might even be able to make the portal to Alfheim. Okay, there we go! Oh, whoa! Something's happening! Oh my god, look at this cool lava effect! Oh, that is amazing! Oh, I like it already! That is really cool! So that means it's ready, it's ready to create our masterpiece. So now let's throw the living rock on and see if it makes the rune. Oh, no, I missed! Here we go! There it goes! Whoa! We didn't make just one, we made two! Three! We made three runes of water! Oh, we're almost there, guys. Alright, guys, well, thank you for watching me for our first few Botania episodes. Next episode, we're gonna get even further, and we're gonna try and make the agglomeration plate. That'll get us one step closer to being able to craft the portal to Alfheim, and as soon as we've done that, we can get serious about making A, wings, so we can create our castle, and B, getting to Alfheim itself so that we can raid it and kill this elven lord and take the second piece of Renzovia and get one step closer to ruling the world with the power of a god. Until next time, guys, take care.